UCLA Marching Band represents during the fall season the proud southern campus of the University of California, which is nestled in the hills of Westwood, 14 miles from downtown Los Angeles and minutes from the beautiful Pacific Ocean. Biannually, the UCLA campus becomes the scene for the all-university meeting, where student leaders and the various campus bands unite to generate student service for the annual UCLA UCB Gridiron Clash. Following the meeting, the visiting bands join with the Bruin Band to rehearse the massive halftime show. With the setting sun, the visitors from the north take the opportunity to enjoy Los Angeles nightlife. Pre-game ceremonies Saturday are climaxed as the UCB band joins the UCLA band for the Star Spangled Banner. At halftime, the Davis and Santa Barbara bands join in a salute to the major campuses of the University of California. In the Bay Area, the San Francisco Medical Center and the Davis campus are depicted by the Golden Gate Bridge formation, with Larry Austin, Davis band director, conducted. The mother campus at Berkeley is saluted by forming the Campanile as the chimes ring out under the baton of James Burdall, director of bands at Berkeley. To the Southland next and the Hollywood Bowl. Riverside, La Jolla and Santa Barbara are acknowledged as Santa Barbara director Hal Brendel conducts. To the outline of UCLA's Royce Hall, the show closes under the direction of Clarence Sawhill, director of bands at UCLA. Having saluted each campus, attention is turned to the president of the University of California, Clark Kerr. After the presentation of awards, the different campus groups divide for the second half of the game. Major college and university bands throughout the country require high caliber musicians in order to maintain high standards of showmanship and musical quality. Many years of previous experience are necessary before an individual can take on the responsibility of a university marching band schedule. The majority of new university bandsmen come from fine high school bands throughout the state and country. Other musicians receive their training in private military academy bands and in the armed forces. Still, others do not have as formal a training but acquire the necessary interests and fundamentals from scouting, drum and bugle corps, and drill teams. Whatever their background, young musicians everywhere look to the university bands as an example to follow. And university bands look towards young musical groups for their future members. With this joint spirit in mind, each year the UCLA band sponsors a high school band day as do most university bands in the country. Bands arrive early in the morning from all parts of the Southland. Groups of every size and musical ability are represented on the field. Who is rehearsed several times to enable all bands to clearly understand their specific part in the show. 2,300 musicians rehearse for two hours to present this spectacular display. While the rehearsal is in progress, a large part of the audience is already gathered at the Hollywood Bowl for the annual Why They in Hollywood. TV personality Art Linkletter emcees the show, which features the singing group The Four Preps, singer Jimmy Rogers, comedian Pat Buttram, and many other stars. 10,000 youngsters and their leaders enjoy the bowl program and then travel to the Coliseum for the UCLA football game. An hour before game time, the parade of the bands begins as more than two dozen high school bands make their entrance. After viewing the UCLA band in action, performing the pre-game show, the high school groups exhibit spirit from their section of the stadium. Halftime marks the climax of the day's rehearsal as the multitude of musicians covers the field. A salute to America. 2,300 high school musicians from all over the South.
one nation under God. America, we salute you. Before any of the band shows can be put on the rehearsal field, many hours of preparation are required by the directors and students on the band staff. The movement of each man on the field is calculated on the big board before being charted. Mimeograph copies of the maneuvers are distributed to each band member and special music must be arranged and copied for each formation and maneuver. The music librarians distribute copies of each musical arrangement to every member of the marching band. Issuing and keeping check on over 100 instruments rests on the equipment staff, while the uniform custodians are responsible for outfitting each bandsman in a complete uniform. Publicity concerning all band appearances is also prepared by members of the band staff. Motion pictures and still photographs are taken of each band maneuver to correct errors. The band's football team serves as a recreational outlet for many members between performances. All of the functions of the band staff are under the coordination of the band manager, Dick Robbins, and the directors, Clarence Sawhill and Kelly James. Night games in the Coliseum offer a welcome relief from daytime heat as the band performances take on another phase of excitement. Sharing the spotlight with the band, the world-famous lighted card stunts give an interesting rendition of the Steve Canyon comic strip. With thousands of students, each operating a flashlight and color wheel, another magical formation appears. Los Angeles International Airport is the scene of the UCLA band's departure for the annual trip north. After a last minute checkup, the planes wing their way towards the Bay Area and arrive at the San Francisco airport. After delicious lunch and a quick rehearsal, the Bruin band proudly enters the stadium at Palo Alto, home of the Stanford Indians. Following the Stanford band's pregame show, UCLA's band re-enters the field for the playing of the Star Spangled Band. The fine pregame show becomes the prologue for UCLA's smashing victory, 55 to 13. After the game, the band journeys to San Francisco for a night on the town. tired group of musicians that returns to Union Square at 1 a.m. to board the buses, to head for the airport, and home. With the fall of the Indians, UCLA begins to prepare for the meeting with its crosstown rival, USC. While the team practices, the band also takes to the field to polish and perfect its techniques. Following a successful rehearsal Saturday morning, the band enters the stadium. After concluding one of the finest pregame shows of the season, the band joins the USC band in the national anthem. Facing the number two team in the country, Bruin's spirit is high as they hold the Trojans to a 3-0 lead at the half. 
After concluding their halftime presentation, the UCLA band scrutinizes the performance of their rivals as the Trojan band takes the field to conclude the halftime ceremony. In the fourth quarter, UCLA adds three points to the scoring column, bringing the game to a tie. With the help of the student body, led by head yell leader Charlie Brown and the mighty Bruin band under the baton of Clarence Sawhill, UCLA wins the game with a final score of 10 to 3. Monday in Westwood is the scene of joyous merrymaking as students cram the Westwood Wilshire Boulevard intersection. Led by the band, thousands of students march through the campus for an official rally in front of the art building celebrating the victory. At the annual band bowl, UCLA again meets USC on the gridiron as the football teams representing the bands meet for an intramural clash. A skeleton band also performs a halftime show mocking the traditions of the rival school. UCLA bandsmen gain another trophy by defeating USC bandsmen 19 to 6. The University of Utah finds UCLA spirit high despite the Thanksgiving holiday as an active sideline band enthusiastically encourages the Bruin 11 on to another victory. Rehearsals are resumed after the holiday for the final game of the season to be televised coast to coast via NBC TV. Satisfied with an excellent rehearsal Saturday morning, the band gathers for last minute instructions before boarding the buses. During the trip to the stadium, every bandsman mentally prepares to present the finest performance of the season to the largest audience of the year, an audience stretching from coast to coast. University of Washington, Stanford University, the University of California. 